As usual, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, being at Vertical Church is like being home because we love your pastor, we love his family, we love you guys as a church, and uh, thank you for having us here. Can we say a word of prayer? Yes? Oh, two people said yes. You guys can pray with me then, okay? All right, let's try it again. Can we say a word of prayer? All right. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. And as we enter in your word, I pray that it will be your Holy Spirit leading us, that it will be all of you and none of me, so that you people can hear your voice. And as we leave this place this morning, we can say that you spoke to us. Just guide us, Holy Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body, we focus on your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For over two decades, I ask people to say a confession of faith with me before I start teaching. Can you guys do it with me? If you guys remember me, I am a teacher, and I usually turn church into a classroom, which means I talk, you answer, so we get interactive in the Word of God. Lift your Bible, Bibles with me, and please repeat. This book that is called the Bible, it contains the Word of God. Whatever it says that I am, I am. Whatever it says that I have, I have. Whatever it says that I can do, I can do. And wh whatever it says that I am seated, I am seated. God said it. I believe it. And that is enough for me. Give the Lord a hand, please. If you can join me in the book of Isaiah... Pastor Angelo mentioned that uh, January, you guys were going to be talking and studying on fasting. So the Lord led me to Isaiah 58, so that we can talk a little bit about it. Depending on the Bible that you have, mine on top says, true fasting. And we're going to read nine verses that I pray that would minister to your spirit First verse 1 says, shout it out loud. If you notice, verse 1 talks about the importance. It says, make it very clear, very loud and very clear. Shout, shout it out loud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. Obviously, they are talking to the people of Israel because there is no church at the moment when it is, it is being written. But then God is saying, make sure that they hear. Verse 2, God presents the complaint. For day after day, they seek me out. They seem eager. They seem. It's not that they are. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions, and they seem eager for God to come near them. But notice that it, the, the language that it says, it seems, it seems, they look like. Verse 3, why have we fasted? They say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? So God is repeating, God is quoting them and saying, they say, we did this yet, we did not get the right response from you. And Pastor Greg, during the uh, group session, he was mentioning that God is not like like a genie, right? You rub the lamp, and then he, here is God out to grant you your three wishes. Verse, as we continue, it says, 
Yet, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. I usually tell people, underline, circle, highlight, because this is very important. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with, wicked, with a wicked fist. And then God says, you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Verse 5, God asks them a question. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? So let's think about it. They were abstaining from food, just like we might do today, right? Uh, sometimes we abstain from food because of work, because we're b busy, because we're doing something, but not necessarily it means that we're doing something for the Lord, right? But they were saying, we abstained ourselves from this, yet you didn't do a thing. It's like God is obligated in their eyes. But God already stated that they were abstaining from food, but they were not abstaining from more important things like treating people well, getting along with their employees, with their relatives, with their neighbors. Five, again, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Only a day? My son, he is a minister also in our church, and the other day we were doing in Spanish the equivalent of, of a sweet 16, right? And then he goes, on, uh, he goes up to minister, and the first thing that he says is, well, I don't like sweet, sweet 16s. And I thought, whoa, this is a... A rough way to start the, the meeting, right? But then he explained. Because usually, we, if it's Mother's Day, we honor our moms one day when it should be every day. Or Father's Day, it should be every day. God is saying the same thing right here. Should I be honored or people? Should they be honored just one day when you're fasting? And the answer we know, obviously, is not. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in a sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Obviously, there are two points of view in all of this. God from heaven watching what we are doing and us performing whatever we think is appropriate. Now, verse 6, he clarifies, and he says the kind of fasting that he is after. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? And I did mention this briefly in the first meeting. We do not have in the Old Testament a direct command Something that will say, thou shalt fast. We have only a reference in the book of Leviticus when the Day of Atonement is mentioned where it says that you should humble yourselves and afflict your souls and it has been interpreted as fasting. I am well aware I've been teaching this book only 35 years. And I understand, I am very well aware of all the fasts from different people in the Old Testament and the New Testament. But what gets my attention is that most of the time that they were fasting, they were doing it as a result of mourning. Whenever they had tragic events or whenever they were in turmoil, then they would go and fast and try to get God's attention which is okay, but the way I see it is sometimes we try to get to God, like, I am in a big need, so let me offer a little extra so that I can get your attention. But God says, the, the fast that I have chosen, what I wish you would abstain from, pretty much God is saying, 
is verse 6. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To lose the chains of injustice? So God is bringing them back to reality and he is saying, maybe you guys should abstain from being in justice, in justice with other people. Maybe you should treat people better and differently. He keeps saying, and untie the course of, jo of the joke, to set the oppressed free and break every joke. So pretty much is saying, God is saying, forget about, no, maybe he's not saying forget about it, but he's saying, why don't you do this? Treat people well, love people, don't oppress them, don't exploit them, do the right thing with your neighbor, with your employees, with your family, abstain from hurting them and oppressing them. Verse 7, it's funny because I, I, in a way I see God saying the opposite. Instead of telling them, Pre uh, prevent yourself from eating. Actually, he's saying, go and eat. I should have gotten a laugh in there, you know. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood, and I was saying in the first meeting that I commend this church for the social work that is done here because it is commendable, commendable. again, providing food, clothing, water. Anytime I go on Facebook, I see Vertical Church doing pretty much, you guys are the picture, the clear picture of verse uh, 7 because God says, take care of people, feed them, clothe them, watch over them. Verse 8, then cause and effect. When you do this, this is what is going to happen. Action and reaction. Remember that these people were complaining originally. We did this, yet you did not answer. And God is giving, me, giving them the answer. When you treat people well, when you love people, we have to remember that people are created in the image and likeness of God. So as we love people, as we respect people, notice that he says people in general, and then he says your own flesh, meaning Family, relatives, spouse, children, immediate family. So he says, love them, treat them well, provide for them. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. So he is saying, you will get whatever you are asking for when you take care of people. And your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. So pretty much he's saying, instead of just doing a ritualistic practice, and sometimes I figure that it is easier to do the, to do the external things than the internal things. I'll say it again. Sometimes it's easier to do the physical things. We can bow down and have a, post, a physical posture of humility and maybe our heart is not humble. Just notice, we, we, we can do the physical things, yet internally not be there. The next two verses that I am going to read, one out of James 5. It talks about Christians asking for forgiveness. And I want you to think about this. Sometimes we may offend people and we just, okay, I did it, 
let's forget it, let's not talk about it, let's ignore it, let's sweep it under the rug. And I, I truly believe that as Christians, if we're big enough to wrong someone, we should be big enough to make it right. James 5, James 5, okay, there it is. James 5, it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Did you, do you remember that we closed Isaiah 58, 9 saying, so that you could be healed? So that your light will go before you? As we start this new year, sometimes we think that the success of our year depends on just removing the old page from December 2021 and then jumping into January 2022. And then things are going to change. And let me tell you what God told me the last three months of the year. He said, in order for people to have a better year, they have to change, not the page of the calendar, but they have to change inside. They need to be healed in their mind. They need to be healed in their emotions. And they have to get it right with other people that they have hurt, with other people that they have wounded with other people that they have wronged. That's why I am saying, if we're going to fast, the right attitude, the top of my Bible, the NIV says, true fasting. True fasting has to do not just with what we do on the outside, but the attitude of the heart that we have inside. Remember, we can bow down and everybody think, oh, what a humble person because he's bowing down and worshiping God. And maybe in our heart we are not humble. Maybe there is no humility. Isn't it interesting that this verse ends with, the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Most of the time we use that particular part of the verse to talk about spiritual warfare or to talk about prayer. But actually the context is that as we confess our sins to each other, as I go to the person that I have wronged and say, I did this, or I said this, or I thought of this, and so on, and as we pray for each other and as we forgive each other, then it says the prayer of the righteous avails or is powerful. So, a better way, abstaining from hurting people, abstaining from belittling people, abstaining from wronging people. And the last verse is out of Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Not only we are called to ask for forgiveness, but also we are called to forgive. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13. Isn't this all the opposite of Isaiah 58? Isn't this all the opposite of what he said that the people were doing? Verse 13, then it says, we have 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another if you have, have if you has uh, if any of you has a grievance against someone forgive as the lord forgave you we i i trust me we can definitely have a better year when our mind our heart our spirit is lined up with the word of god not just when we abstain ourselves from food, but when we abstain ourselves from hurting people, attacking people, when we learn to forgive, and when we ask for forgiveness. For quite some time, I've been telling my congregation, what matters to God is not the church building, it's not the chair, it's not the carpet or screen or the instruments. What matters to, peop to God is people. He is 
after people. And as we get right with people, we're going to be right with God. My prayer is, let us abstain not just from food. Let us abstain from doing wrong to other people. Let's pray.